Hi, everyone. Harry here to talk about the ch criminal charges against 16 electors in Michigan and why they're very important. All right. We're in the midst of maybe the worst week uh, any public figure has ever had in this country. So it could be that this uh, news would kind of flow over us. But the Attorney General of Michigan brought charges against 16 false electors, people who back in December of 2020 got together and made attestations. And really, the, the, the charges here are really clear and clean. So this is the time when, uh, by law, the electors from Michigan need to get together as specified. The, the, um, the Michigan statute is clearer than others. There are sort of five to seven states in play for these false electors, and Michigan has this singular feature that they have to meet in the state capitol. That's a rule. Moreover, it's a rule that the Trump team knew. There's a fellow named Kenneth Cheeseborough, who worked a lot with John Eastman, and he writes up a whole memo and actually says, you know, in Michigan, you must meet in the state capitol. Maybe, he says, it doesn't have to be in the chambers. Maybe you could do it like in the curtilage of the public area. And they actually consider for a time, like, you know, kids sneaking into a rock concert, staying overnight in the Capitol and then getting up and, and doing this. They don't, but what they do is sort of equally brazen and more dishonest. So they filed these pieces of paper, one with the National Archives and one with the Congress. And they say, we, the duly elect electors of Michigan, having met in the state capitol, because that's what you have to put in and says it, and it's just a brazen lie, and they know it's a lie, uh, hereby voted for Donald Trump, et cetera. So uh, it's a really... Um, uh, radioactive kind of criminal lesson. They all, they're told, they, they keep their phones in a bag before going in so nobody can record it. Uh, it's um, just, you know, they, they make that false statement there. It's very clear. So um, it's taken a while. Why is it, why has that happened? Nestle, the attorney general, actually referred these charges of the 16 people to Jack Smith. Uh, and the and the Department of Justice. And this is an interesting theme that's going to be coming up and will have implications. But basically, somebody in Jack Smith's position who's doing a very big case that involves criminal activity in different states and possible charges might be expected to really coordinate with state authorities, share information, strategize about who comes first and the like. Smith, on the contrary, has been hermetically sealed. No information out, no information in. So um, they submitted, Michigan, a long time ago, these uh, actions, and they just never heard back. So Nestle decided, that's the Attorney General of Michigan, look, we just can't let this go. Every, every week we bring charges against Democrats, Republicans for, say, insurance fraud or falsely signing papers that are far less consequential and far less brazen than these. We've just got to gotta go forward. So, so the 16 people, as best we can tell, they did not know it was coming. The uh, significantly, the attorney general used complaints, that is pieces of paper, that she was the one who filed the attestation and then a magistrate had to review them and say, yep, looks like this state's a crime to me. It took much of the day uh, yesterday for the magistrate to do it. And we're told that the 16 folks um, first got word of it um, yesterday. They had predictable responses of this is politicization. This is outrageous. But good luck to that. I mean, they put their signature very clearly on very false uh, papers, and they've each uh, now been charged with something like eight different counts involving the different uh, papers and different places they sent it and a few different charges. They are, it's a little hard to tell what they're looking at, but the lead charges um uh, take or, or provide for 14 years under Michigan law, 
Uh, it looks as if people serve maybe a third of that, but we're talking about several years in um, Michigan prison for having done this. Now, no, as best we can tell, no one's tried to get them to cooperate either against one another or, importantly, the anybody in Washington, because we know that Michigan, like Georgia, like Arizona, there was real coordination, especially with Rudy Giuliani, who was kind of the ringleader here, but also in some instances, Donald Trump himself. So this is the sort of state only action that could, in fact, be the first half of a broader federal conspiracy that begins with these state actors and and culminates under the, some leadership role or at least aiding and abetting role by people in the Oval Office up to and including Trump. But all of this is just completely new because Nestle com, uh, just changed the landscape dramatically with these charges. Now, uh, people have said, well, why uh, why didn't she charge also um, either Trump or maybe the head of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel, who seems to have been involved? In, and uh, Nestle answered that, and I think persuasively, look, my job, I'm just, this is really clear violation of Michigan law. Maybe others will do more with it, but that's my lookout now. That's what I want to do. And likewise, why didn't she just do a few ringleaders? Well, all these guys signed it and really committed brazen crime. So things may still happen in terms of people cooperating. Things may still happen in terms of this joining up with uh, Jack Smith. But these guys who I think were somehow believing they were just acting politically, maybe, or it was, you know, controversial, uh, now understand it's not just political, it is criminal. And they're looking at serious time, not to mention potential ruin, it seems to me, within the uh, Michigan political scene. So they've got a week or so to come in. Don't expect big bail or anything like that. They'll probably be released on their own recognizance. An interesting wrinkle here, one of them apparently is vacationing in Europe. And when you come back into the country, if customs sees there's an arrest, they take you into immediate custody. Will that happen here? Maybe. But in any event, the landscape's been really changed in, uh, in Michigan, and it may have real implications for the federal uh, charges as well. Uh, when these um, 16 defendants have to show up and face the music. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.